Candace, I'd like to start with you. Can, can you share with us when you first realized that your COVID was long haul COVID? Um, sure. Uh, so when I initially had symptoms in March of 2020, um, COVID wasn't even on our radar. I hadn't traveled. Um, I was showing mild symptoms. I went to the doctor and um, I seemed to recover quite quickly. I was able to continue on with my daily life and didn't think too much of it. Um, it was a few months later when I was hit with the same symptoms, um, but much more severe, along with a host of other symptoms um, that affected my whole body and eventually couldn't work. It was then that I started to realize that it could have been related to COVID when I was hearing about other people with the same types of issues and symptoms. And if we think back to March 2020, I mean, this was, you know, long before the vaccine was available. How are you now? Um, honestly, there hasn't been much improvement um, over that year and a half plus since I've had the long haul symptoms. Um, I'm still struggling, extremely fatigued. My husband has to do all of the housework and the cooking. I'm still not back to work. It's been a long haul, as they say. Yeah, no, it sounds like it. Adriana, can I ask you the same questions? When, when you first realized that you had a much bigger problem on your hands than expected and, and also how you're doing today? Yes, um, I got sick in December 2020. And um, unlike Candace, unfortunately, I never actually recovered. It was, uh, the doctor said, you know, uh, it's COVID, you should just let it run. 10 days, you'll be fine. And, you know, 10 days went by and I wasn't improving. I was going at least twice a week to the ER because of my oxygen was low. My heart rate was through the roof. I couldn't even move. Um, when the end of January hit and I was still very sick, like I knew obviously there was something very wrong and I didn't know what, what to do at that point. And here we are a year and, you know, several months later. H has your condition improved much, if at all, since then? The only thing that's improved has been my, my lungs because I've been doing daily lung therapy um, with a specialized COVID uh, lung specialist. And it took me about 10 months, almost 11 months to be able to laugh without having a coughing fit. Wow. Um, other than that, everything else is the same. Uh, my cognitive function actually has been declining. My brain function, um, I've always had very bad brain fog, and now it's actual neurological uh, damage that they detected. Um, my brain function, again, is going down. My heart is still very bad. I still get 120, 160 heart rate out of the blue, and that's in two different uh, medical uh, medicines for the heart. Wow. D Dr. Bogosh, what do you think? You, you know, a lot of people are going to be listening to, to both Candace and Adriana in this age of, of variants and, and subvariants and thinking, could this happen to me? I mean, you know, what's the answer? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously awful to hear. And you, we hear more and more stories uh, like this. And, and, you know, everyone seems to know somebody that has chronic symptoms after COVID, one of the issues, of course, is the data that we have to date. And, you know, this is being studied increasingly, but there's a lot of room for improvement in some of the clinical studies that we have. Some of the studies don't fully define the issue. There's limitations because some of the studies don't have control groups or they have reporting biases or there's non, a non-standardized definition of what long COVID is. But you've heard, like, of course, it's real, it's here. Candace, how has your life changed? It's changed almost 100%. Um, I Really, my days are spent just managing symptoms. Um, I can no longer exercise. I can, I've, I'm having issues with my legs, um, pain and muscle spasms. Um, like Adriana said, I'm having cognitive issues as well, finding it very difficult to read and watch TV. Um, so most of the day, I just lie in bed. Um, I can listen to audiobooks, and and that's it. You know, so, you know, uh, Candace, it, it strikes me that it's not every day that you have an opportunity to actually speak with an infectious disease specialist. I, I'm curious, do you have a question for Dr. Bogosh? Um, I do. I'd, I'd love to know, is there hope for long haulers in the future? Um, and how is the research going in Canada as far as 
uh, trials for drugs and for treatment? Yeah, there absolutely is. Uh, there is hope. And it's not just in Canada, it's around the world. I think it's increasingly recognized that long COVID is a serious problem. And as we heard at the very beginning, there's more attention paid toward this by both federal and provincial governments. And in fact, there are clinics popping up that are really geared to support individuals who are suffering, suffering from chronic symptoms following a COVID-19 infection. Dr. Bogosh, you know, a lot of folks in Canada are vaccinated, not once, but, but twice, even three times. Has that affected the incidence rate of, of long COVID? You know, based on some of the limited data that we have to date, it does appear that vaccination significantly reduces the likelihood that someone is going to de develop long COVID should they uh, catch COVID-19. Uh, that's obviously a good thing. Adriana, I'd like to give you the final word here. What is it that you would like folks at home watching this to know? And, and what is your hope? Uh, well, first of all, I want them to know that this is a very serious uh, issue. It can happen to absolutely anyone, uh, not just on first infections. It can be on repeated infections. Um, and you, it's not linked to general health or your age or anything like that. It can happen. I was 100% healthy, competitive swimmer. I'm young. I didn't have anything before. And I still can't work. Absolutely everything in our world has been turned upside down. And it can happen to anyone. And my hope is that more people are cautious, uh, you know, just simple precautions, take care of yourself, take care of others, um, try to keep reasonable distance and take it seriously because you don't know what's going to happen to you. Well, Adriana, uh, I'm listening and I suspect many others are as well. Uh, we're going to leave it there. I, I think we could talk for a lot longer than this, but thank you so much. Candice, Adriana, Dr. Bogosh, uh, what a wonderful conversation and I wish you well. Thank, thank you. you.